Well, I don't know what happened. My phone crashed. It doesn't do that in the winter. I mean, it's not overly hot in the car. Maybe because I got my hotspot on for uh, uh, the zombies back there. But uh, I don't know what happened. My phone just flat out said enough. I'm going to bed. So uh, we'll continue on. Set number four. Again, uh, Amy said. Uh, um, Amy said that pull the shoes was a little at a, like all over the track. Uh, and now that I say it out loud, she need, might need to be shot. And as you say, she was all over the track, making getting out of gear is what you told me. Well, it sounds like Oris was on ice with no cork. So more than likely, what it could have been was she was needs slipping. shot. She was hitting and then trying to get herself. Right yeah, she was slipping. That's what she was doing. Um, so pull the shoes, made a break today, but as I said, I'm not concerned with her. I'll go with her myself. A couple of horses, there were some takeaways from today, some horses I want to go with from now on, at least for a little while, and pull the shoes is one of them. Miss Philly, I think, has got a tremendous amount of talent, but as I said, made a break on Jason Merriman two weeks ago that I saw him, made a break on Amy today, and in between, had good trips, you had gone with her one time, and she was absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to go with her this week. Cherahola, I think, I had a great talk. You know, Amy and I talk about it all the time, and I don't think it's, it's lost on you sometimes, maybe not all the time, how lucky we are to have the people we have in Ohio, and the new people we have, them learning to do their job, and the, the gentleman had come to me, Antoine, today, takes care of Cherahola, he goes, he goes, and he had said to me last week, I believe, she just doesn't seem to look as good as some of the other horses, and that's important. So I told him, I said, Antoine, my job's difficult on the track. My job is to train the horses up to their limit without pushing them over, without hurting them, without stretching them out, without getting them, getting their confidence beaten up. My job, it's somewhere between a sports team and the army is what we are, is what we are running at the stable. And I don't want to continue to push when the horses don't look great. I said, I appreciate you coming to talk to me. When I look at Cherahola, here's a taller filly. She's going through a big growth spurt. He said, she eats fantastic. I said, that's important. When we train the horses, the most important question I need you to answer at any given time is, did they eat when you fed them lunch? Do they feel good in the stall? Do they get their head over the stall? Or are they hanging their head in their corners and picking away at their food? That is important to you. That's a huge, huge, huge thing to answer. And he said, no, no, sir. He said, she's always eating. She's always eating everything. He said, great. So we can fix. You think, and I, I believe you're right, she's a little bit underweight. Cowboy by the Sea, uh, third and six, and the one other one Lauren had, we ran, uh, or we were running a power pack through one of them. So it's a five-day treatment of panic here, a warmer. And they'll really spark up sometimes after you do them. Uh, we're doing Cowboy by the Sea this week. We did third and six. Who's the other horse Lauren is in the end there? <coughs> It wasn't that one. It was another one, I think. Anyway, I had said, Antoine, we'll get the panicure into the horse. And then what I'd like you to do is, and this is what we do with a lot of our horses, uh, go on the track first with her. Have her ready first and out the track as soon as you can. When she gets in, around 10, 10, 15, feed her a little bit of food, a little bit of a mash or a little bit of food, and then give her a big lunch. If you can get that extra feeding into her mid-morning, you will see her pick up her weight right away and start to shine up. We can get some additional vitamins and, and uh, supplements into that mash, into that feed. And it's in between that and the work we're putting in where you're going to see a different horse in two, three weeks. So I'm glad even the most people that have the re most remedial training, these people have only learned. And when I say uh, this gentleman knew nothing, he was a barber 60 days ago. He knew nothing about horses or horse racing. And his really, really picked up what we're trying to do. And it, and it, it was great to have him ask me those questions and I was so, so happy to answer it for him. So Cherahola uh, looked good today but made that break. I took that Murphy off the inside. She was running in a little bit and I lost her coming out of the last turn. And it was right when I was going to start putting her in gear to get her in the passing lane. So as I said to Brody, I put Cherahola on the run. Don't beat yourself up over no chance in hill. Just understand that, you know, what had happened today and how you try to remedy and rectify it for next time. So, um... I thought Chirahola was good, and I think she's going to be really, really good over the next month or so. Uh, pull the shoes. I think it was just shoeing. Now that I think about all the information Amy gave me, what I saw on the track and in the video, just shoeing. Nothing more. Uh, widespread panic was good again. Joe said slipping a little bit, but was really, really good. Victory Blue Chip was oddly flat today. Jason said to me, Baycox is horse this week? And I said, I'm not sure, Jason. I don't think so. He said he just seemed flat. 
Now, does he need to be shod? Would he just... Some horses, you know, when they're slipping, will just slip and feel like they're out of gear like like uh, Pull the Shoes did. Other horses don't have the confidence. They'll just slow down like easy fall. No, no, no. I can't go across that ice. I'm just going to go this speed. And that's what some horses do. So maybe that's what was going on with Victory today because he's been great. Like, overpoweringly good. And then today it was very flat. So I suspect that has more to do with it than anything else. Um... Militant was great today. Did Eric go with Militant? He asked who he was by. Pulling up, I can hear him say to Jason, Who, who's this one by? Because it's six-pack. Uh, I could have elaborated on his breeding, but I didn't. Uh, obviously, Militant is the brother to uh, Charming Life. Right? Is that her name? Charming Life? Charm Life. Charm Life. So, Nancy Allison's brother is okay. Militant. Oh, right. Yeah. I keep forgetting that. He's by six-pack. Yeah, two different bookends. We have Charmed Life on one end and Nancy Olsen on the other end. Somewhere in between, closer to the top, hopefully, is a Militant. He was fantastic today. Born to Dance finished up. I heard Jason give him a couple of swats down the lane, but he finished up strong. And then again, I liked what he did after the mile. He didn't just pace hard up to the wire. He paced hard after the wire, through the turn, into the back stretch. <laughs> again, he's coming. One of the most impressive horses for me today was Ready for Landing. Go back and watch his video. I said to Jer I said to Daryl when he was going with him, because Daryl had gone with him at the start. And I said to him, I said, I can't tell if he's a coward or whether he's smart. Because he was really rude. And then the one day I put a real hard training into him. And the very next day I came out with every intention to train him again. And I came out, he was a different horse. Just like that, changed. All right, I give up. Was it that or was it, oh, that's what you want me to do? I don't know which it was, but he trained awesome tape. You watch. Here's an icy track. He slides around me. I made a break. Slides down to the inside. Again, Daryl kept him coddled up pretty good. And then once he hit his best stride, he let him sprint to the wire. The horse was awesome. The horse was very good. Probably the most impressive horse of the day, I think, in my mind, was, was ready for landing. A little tidbit, a little story I want to tell everybody. I just happened to be perusing the Ohio sale. Do you like that name? Do you like that word? I did. I just knocked your elbow. I was perusing the Ohio sale last night and noticed a full brother to Ready for Landing as a three-year-old in there. Burks had him and said, can't quite get him to go. Maybe you can. Which can mean anything between can't get him to go to. He broke down. He broke down. And unfortunately, he can't race with a broken foot. So it's unlikely it's the other. I mean, Burks sells a lot of horses. They don't do that. Now, I can dig around for some more information, but I can tell you one thing. The equipment we started with on Ready for Landing is vastly different than the equipment he wears right now. So even he went through uh, a fairly significant uh, mind-altering change to both his body and equipment. The horse was amazing today, and I am actually interested in doing a little digging on the road. Uh, the fifth set. Now it's starting to get muddy. Now we have a giant tractor coming at us. It would be literally like Bigfoot on the inside of the track just running over cars and, and bouncing around and, and it was the chains the point there was it was the chains yeah. so if you look I, I don't think you can see in the video as the tractor's coming at us it isn't until if you see the horses can see him coming the only horse jostled at all is Blanton's Blue he caused the whole thing he's jostled he sees it but it looks like he's going to behave and then all of a sudden something happens and he bolts he went over a bump, a mound on the inside, and he had chains on the front. They were picking up these big... Uh, oh, paint tanks. They look like plane. tanks of some sort, yeah. And as he went over the bump, the chains rattled against the forks of this tractor, and it was game on. Blanton's Blue was just going to go right through the fence and off the property. And he cleaned out Antilles Hanover, who would come back trotting. But uh, before that, <laughs> every, everybody did their work well, right? Blanton's Blue was trotting good. Runs into the turns, runs out in the straightaway. He's got a lot of maturing to do. I, I hope he doesn't force me to castrate him. I will if he keeps it up. But I don't think he will. And I can't blame the tractor incident on him. But just the being rude sometimes. He still acts the same way he did a month ago. Remember I told you. That's a warning shot. If you don't improve and your attitude stays the same for that month where you're just like, eh, whatever. You may end up a castrated horse. And that very likely could happen. Not going to yet. And leave him the way he is for now, but he does have to grow up. Antilles Hanover came with a big rush right up beside me and looked great right up until the point I completely cleaned him out. 
and then uh, he came back trotting also. I didn't hit the horse. We slammed into one another, jog cart to jog cart, and kind of went across, and Jason was in behind us, and his quick reflexes did nothing. He grabbed up Gypsy Hill, and he made a break, and then came flying on the end of the mile, and, and Blanton's blue caught back quickly also. So it was a good trip. And Tilly's Hanover was good. Sweeney made a break in behind me and ended up just beat for second. Looked very, very good afterwards. Uh, Gypsy Hill finished up strong. Sedona Hill was good. She literally looked like she was driving a tractor earlier. She just went right by it like there was nothing there. No tractor, no chains, no bumps, no nothing. Went right past it. It was like she could have went to the inside of the tractor. Uh, Irresistible Sun got jostled but was good. Mel Gibswan. Jo Joey loves his horse, and I mean loves his horse. He said to me after, I said, how was he? I didn't even get, was he, out of my mouth. And he goes, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> he absolutely loves Mel Gibson and gets along with him. This horse is a really, really nice horse. And Blanton's Blue, as I said, was good too. So a great set there. The sixth set, mud bath. You can tell. We're going around the first turn, and I'm sitting in with green tea, and my, and my glasses are just covered. My face is covered. I'm like, no, no, no more of this. I just moved out and sat beside uh, Melanie's Michaela. And somebody said, oh, she looked way better. Yeah, she looked okay. I asked Jason after, was she better? Nope. <laughs> now, he was mad because he was covered in mud. I said, <laughs> so, I mean, because I don't go there often. I said, he goes, she doesn't have much talent. <laughs> all right. Now, we all thought that, and I use this all the time, Obviously, Austral Hanover had no talent last year. So it's hard to gauge talent in January. But I look at her, and it's not like a trotter, right, that can advance quickly. This is a pacer. Now, Procrastinator was terrible at two also. It's not like he won the Metro either. He's got 22,000, man. He's a four-year-old, so before we get too excited. And somebody had asked me a great question. A great question that maybe I don't answer because I answer it in my head all the time. Is it is it worth holding on to the horses and rolling the dice, or is it worth cutting the line, stopping the bleeding right now. It's always worth stopping the bleeding unless your best case scenario is rather interesting. So with Melanie's Michaela, I don't see how we could get her from here to a stake horse. Sure, she could be an overnight horse. She could be a fair horse. Absolutely. I don't want a Pennsylvania bred overnight fair horse. I don't. We didn't buy her to train down to be an overnight horse. And we're not going to keep her for that reason. So it's almost February 1st. She still has almost 20 days, 18 days to change my mind. But as of right now, she's still on the truck to the Ohio sale on the 15th. Addie went from watching videos and being a zombie to literally being a zombie and out cold. So Green Tea, uh, I skipped over him. Just amazing. You want to talk about a horse that's so impressive. That went from... I literally had the conversation, <laughs> I'll never forget it, Dr. Rucker's the best. He said to me, he goes, just get rid of him. <laughs> just get rid of him, he wouldn't Why? trot. I said, I'd like to kill him. He goes, no, just get rid of him. I said, well, you know, I, I would. He goes, ah, you know what, do you think, because he doesn't look like he has any talent. And I said, well, I can't speak to that because he's running a lot, but it feels like there's a horse in there. I just think it would come out quicker if we killed him. He said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you do whatever changes you got to make and train him as hard as you got to do. See if you can get a horse out of there and if you can't you think gelding might fine we'll call it last resort and then he's gone then you get rid of him okay it's almost like the horse was listening in on the conversation it's like oh my god he's serious I'm like, I'm have to, i gotta stop fooling around here because i just sat outside today and you see how green he was went to pull up in the last turn because he didn't know what to do i wasn't asking to advance i was just asking him to sit there and park and he's like do you want me to go back to the barn now do you want me to pull out i don't understand what's going on here and then I, I roared at him, tapped him on the tail. Daryl started up the inside because nobody can see anything. And then he, he goes, oh, now we're going. And zoom, he was gone and just drove away. I, him, uh, so he's a green shoe. Obviously, the filly that you went the first with is a Father Patrick. Same Father Patrick line. But what a change in the end. There's like at least three, <laughs> if not four horses have made such a dramatic change in their attitude and have been so impressive. It is really, really, really something to behold. And green tea was awesome today in the mud. Ava, what are you doing? What are you doing? You think I, I'm seeing and looking at the What are you doing? What are you, a horse? You're going to move your mouth when you scratch your head? That's, a, that's, what you, that's a deer blind or whatever they call it for hunters. Yeah. So anyway, green tea was awesome. Lebec in action. Joey said, stayed flat again, did her work well again. Joey's expectations of the horses are super low. 
Like if they don't run, that's like an A. Yeah. If they don't run and actually trot decent the whole way, that could get them to A+. Plus. They don't even have to look good. So Lebec in action, I think, is getting better and does look better. Uh, Sunset Acres Girl, for what she is, she would be A++++. Plus, 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 plus. We bought an obscure, <laughs> unknown, Michigan-bred equine animal, brought it here, and it has looked competitive with almost all the sets we put her in. Looking at last year's results from Michigan Fairs, I can't see how we don't have a competitive animal if she stays the way she is. I think you just drank my drink on purpose. In fact, I believe yours is all gone. Yours is all gone. You have stolen. You resorted to thievery. You stole it. Lamec in action was good. Sunset Acres Girl was good. Alibaba made a break. Amy told the truth, said she cleaned her out at the quarter pole. But Alibaba, she's, she's learning how to go with other horses, right? I'm gonna give her a wash every week. One, because her stakes don't start till September 20th of next year, of this year. Uh, two, because she was training virtually by herself out in Illinois. She's got a lot to learn. And I'm not too concerned about her. We haven't even trained the other filly yet uh, back here again since she got to Northfield. We will this week. What's the rush? You know, we will be able to begin to train them and give them time off and bring them back and retrain them and have them ready all before their first day race. So, Alibaba, a little IX, but uh, she was okay. Melanie's Michaela didn't work. I'm not mad at the Philly. I, I hope you guys don't think that I'm angry saying, oh, Melanie's Michaela. I'm not angry because she's not good enough. It's just life. She's not good enough. Purple People Eater was good. Did not urinate on Amy, so that's a bonus, but she was covered with water. She, 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 she was throwing her head a lot, you said. Yeah, a lot of them were, so we can just throw them right here a lot until they get used to it, for sure. All the yeah. water too, the spray. Yeah, that drove me. That pulled me out of the that two hole. Bad. Let alone, let alone anything else. I was throwing my head the whole time too, because right it was so wet. It wasn't like a, a mud. It was like water with dirt in it. It was like somebody turned the. Yeah, it was like a hose. It's like we were training in exactly like we were training in a, with a, somebody spraying you with a hose. It was very uncomfortable. And then uh, Nicole Hanover. I don't know much about this filly. This is uh, Jason's filly. She looked good. She looked really good. So we give you a lot of video there. Sorry about the video crashing before. My phone decided it would crash. I've never had it in the summer. I've had my phone crash when I was doing videos, but never in the winter before. So it was very weird. So that is your video about the babies today, this week, so to speak. Very, very happy with what I saw this week in Ontario and what I heard about in Ontario uh, again. And now uh, what I saw in Ohio, just very, very optimistic, as I always am anyway but extremely optimistic this year in particular, heading into the month of February of this, this group's graduating year, this group's stakes season. So with that, I'll let you go. I will talk to you all very soon. I hope you all had a great day, because it was a good day. Uh, the mud didn't even bother me that much in the last set. It was a great day here in Ohio. Take care.